You're watching the GameSpot Co-op Stage, sponsored by LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. Hey everybody, welcome back out to the show floor at E3 2016. This is the GameSpot Co-op Stream Live. We are here. Hi, I'm Craig from Screw Attack. Good to see you. <laughs> The, uh, as I said this earlier, the inmates have finally, they've been given, a, they've given us the keys and we are finally here. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank for you. the first time in a decade, this is great. Uh, Nick is here from Screw Attack. What's up? We have Danny. What Hi, up? Danny. You got everyone from GameSpot knows, knows Danny. Uh, yeah. uh, well, such an international Some superstar, don't. it's crazy. Some of them have like Irish blindness. Can you just talk? Just... Can I just hear you talk for sure. a little bit? Sure, <laughs> yeah. Great. Just, just talk for a little with your accent, that's beautiful. How are you doing? Oh. You want me to talk Osquelga? Oh, oh you, can do, you, you can do Aussie too? That's outstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of don't course, <laughs> we have Brian Baker. Going, guys. Beard has hit, has hit the floor at E3, which is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen, E3, we are uh, on uh, day two, technically. Of E3. <laughs> are we? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. It does feel that way. Yeah, sure. It's funny, because after like Monday, people are like, who won E3? <laughs> like, it hasn't even started yet. There's What's like your... three days to go, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All right, so uh, it is Wednesday. We are here. Well, I want to talk about the biggest surprises of E3 okay. so far. Now, uh, I want to, uh, we're going to talk about this game here in a little bit, but I, there's that, we actually have a poll question for you guys who are the viewers. Uh, if you're watching on the Screw Attack YouTube channel, you can click the little eye in the corner, and we have a poll right there talking about Quake Champions, which was a big surprise. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if we want to, we want to know your thoughts. Uh, Quake Champions, does it A, get you excited? B, is it meh? Or is it C, uh, wait, what? You know, like, so we want to know what you guys think. So uh, vote on the poll. We're going to take a look at it and see what you guys think about Quake Champions. All right, and we'll touch on that in a minute. But right now, I think the biggest surprise coming out of E3 as a whole was not so much that Microsoft announced a console. Mm. It was that they announced two consoles, right? That come out within a year of each other. All right. Right? Yeah. So uh, let's talk about that for a little bit, right? The idea of, of what happened there. So, Danny, we'll start with you, man. Sure. Um, uh, the Slim makes sense, right? Like the Xbox One is, if they're talking about launching Scorpio, we're talking like a year and a half from now, yeah. then they really need something to like stem the tide on the Xbox One sort of falling behind. Um, I mean, it, there's no power upgrade in it whatsoever, but it looks nice. It's apparently less loud. It's 40% the size. It doesn't have that big um, power block attached to it anymore. I mean, I'm not really sure if anyone like cares about 4K video or HDR gaming, I think maybe we will start to in a year's time. You do? Uh, no, I have a question. Okay. Uh, would somebody please explain to me and the gentle viewer what HDR is? <laughs> right, it's so, I was talking to Peter Brown, who's like our tech expert about this. So do you remember high dynamic range in like, in like Half-Life 2 Lost Coast? When you're, they... you're just talking crazy words right now. So do you <laughs> just watch the words fly over his head? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so apparently it's not nothing to do with like resolution or anything like that. It has to do with like the value of like shadowing. So like how you like, so, looking like into the color dark... black can get like really black. Yes, exactly. Basically, it's like the the, the different pantones of black. It's to do with color exists. more than resolution. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Okay. I think you need a side by side probably to like actually. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. like there's like when well, uh, tell you, what, you can demonstrate it like on your phone. You have an iPhone, right? I do. You know how there's that HDR option and you're taking a picture. Oh yeah. You wow. Can, Look at Nick getting all yeah, analytical you, it, with this. You can turn that on and it'll take two pictures, so you can actually see this side by side. We need to do that. We should do that. That's great. Okay, so uh, 4K, HD, uh, 4K, HDR, oh, right? Yeah. Is it crazy? So it's smaller, compact, doesn't have the power brick in it. Uh, that's just the Xbox One S, right? And then they're saying Scorpio is going to be the most powerful console ever made. Six. <laughs> Teraflops. So many teraflops. So many teraflops. Is that, is that I, I don't even have six fingers on my one hand. I can't even count that high. <laughs> is that the so uh, E3 2016 meme? The six teraflops? Oh, I don't I know. I think oh, so. I, yeah. Pretty sure. That and Elder Scrolls hype lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get to her. <laughs> we'll, get to, we'll get to her. All right, so. Oh, bless her uh, But just an overall thought, like, the idea of them announcing, you say you say it's a good move. You think it's a good move, you said? Scorpio is good because it, it shows people that the Xbox One has a future. Because right now it's just, it's already lagging behind the PlayStation 4. Like, it's, it's, it's you know, Wii U not talking about it. It's like it's the third in the three horse race. Uh, my worry, though, is that, like, what they're talking about is saying, like, 4K gaming, virtual reality with, like, no holding back. Like, you can have a $2,000 PC right now, which still struggles at 4K, and which still struggles at, like, you running virtual reality games. Yeah. So, like, there's, there's kind of an air of BS with that, and obviously they're, like, they're pushing it. They're saying, look, we're, we're going to be doing something that's better than Sony's VR. Like, trust us, and we're going to have really high-resolution games. Trust us. But it's still just like an element of smoke and mirrors with it. I want to see what the thing is. So I'm like cautiously optimistic about it, but 
Brian, what about you, man? I'm honestly, I can see the reasoning behind doing the two consoles, because you'll have Scorpio for the real guys who want the real high-end stuff, and then the S is a more budget-friendly. People have been waiting for a price cut, mm. and they're getting a better version. But another factor for me is the number of times they said these games that they're bringing out also are cross-platform yeah. for Windows 10. And so I'm going, I can spend 400 on like a new console, <laughs> or I can spend 400 on uh, GeForce 1070 and get everything just the same. Yeah. So why would I bother buying a console? Yeah, that messaging is going to be so different once that console comes out because the, the, like, the graphics world will have shifted again. Mm -hmm. So it probably won't have that same impact. Yeah. Know? It's always changing, man. That, that's the world we live in right now. All right, uh, so obviously that was a big surprise. Uh, God of War, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mentioned that last segment, but just the idea of when that was announced, when Kratos came out from the shadows. Nick, you kind of, you had a raging boner for that. <laughs> uh, well, it's trying to hide that. It was but... poking the guy's head in front of us. You couldn't hide that. <laughs> Thank you for the, the, the visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. No, I'm um, a wordsmith, Nick. Yeah, no, I, I recently got a PlayStation 4 for Black Friday because, you know, af after E3 last year, I was like, okay, now there's too many exclusive games coming yeah. out for this thing. I have to get one. And I've never cared about God of War before. Like, they, they had a God of War collection for PlayStation 4, I believe, but I was never really interested in it. There's something about this God of War where I'm like, okay, this one I can get behind. I don't know whether it's the setting or uh, the, the RPG looking elements to it or some combination of all of it, but I'm really digging this one. This one looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys were talking about the emotional story before. Um, I, I just kind of want to echo that. I feel the exact same way. I like uh, the dynamic of the father and son where the father's trying to teach the son how to you know, be a hunter and all this stuff. It looks really cool. Okay. Um... <laughs> So yeah, everyone's stoked about God of War, right? Brian, when that, when that was announced, how did you feel inside? What, what, hit, what hit the cockles of your stomach? <laughs> well, I think the, the, the Norse mythology, at least as it's been presented in media recently with like the Thor movies, it's much more aggressive than kind of like, like the Greek mythology as a whole. Mm. So it seems like they're really upping the ante of the action they can do with the gods they're going towards. And also from what uh, our resident Sony fan back at Screw Attack, Sean Hines, has been saying recently, Apparently, this God of War game is what Jaffe wants to do for a long time. Really? Yeah, so now they're kind of getting around to his original desires. And you know, it's funny because like, I was thinking of this as they kind of showed the look of everything and how it felt very Norse. Uh, there were rumors like a long time ago yeah. that the next God of War would be you know, centered around Norse mythology yeah. as opposed to Greek and Roman mythology. Um, I think the other rumor was like Egyptian oh, mythology. Really? I, I think I'd heard that somewhere, but it was... It was a case of like the rumor coming to life. It makes sense. You could, like, it's oh, yeah, totally. Grand Theft Auto style, right? It's like yeah, yeah. different city, different uh -huh. whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what's weird about this one is that it's also a different like game. Like, oh it's, yeah. It's not a hack and slash. No. It's no, a. And that, that's that's another part of the reason why this appeals to me is right. because hack and slash has never been my personal cup of tea. So yeah, to see them the chains out of his hands was really right. weird. It was crazy. Well, we'll see. Who knows? Yeah. He might come back. Sure. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about. Um, Okay, we talked about Resident Evil 7 last time, but specifically how that was announced. Right? Right, yeah, Caught yeah. everyone off guard. Yeah, just Caught the everybody idea of off guard. watching that thing. Nick, you were sitting next to me. You and I had a back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you were sitting there like this. You're just covering your ears like a frightened child. And uh, like, Just so you know, my four-year-old, whenever she's scared, she covers her ears. <laughs> right? She probably and got it from you. Probably. I didn't know I did that, but I, I, <laughs> and I am but a like, giant. You, you leaned over to me, and you're like, I will never play this game ever. I will never play this game in <laughs> VR. Like, like seconds into it. It hadn't even been like 30 seconds in. And less, less than 13 hours later, I have a VR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you're already going against your word. Uh, but, yeah, uh, crazy. No, no, like the way they revealed it was so smart because Resident Evil, as of late, has been deviating so far away from horror. Yeah. Like looking at Resident Evil 6, it was like action out the butt. Yeah. Like the people, people didn't respond very positively to it. They've been no, they've never been louder saying that they want it to come back to horror. Mm. And so they did right by everybody revealing Resident Evil 7 the way they did. This just nothing but a creepy atmosphere. You don't even really see characters. Like you all, it's first person which is a first for Resident Evil. And uh, when we were playing the VR, they said that this might be the only time they do it. Yeah. But uh, it, the game is first person. And uh, just the, the title coming up was the best way to reveal it by far. They just see the Roman numeral seven. And 
after like two seconds, I might have been able to be like, oh, that's Resident Evil. But then like right before my brain made the connection, they showed the full logo. And that's when everybody in the audience just started clapping like crazy because it caught see, everybody by surprise. Did you see the uh, the Japanese Biohazard logo? And how yeah, they, yeah, how yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah. It's not just Japanese. It's uh, European, too, I believe. But it's yeah, the American title is Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Biohazard yeah. In, in Europe, it's Biohazard 7 Resident Evil. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a neat little way to kind of like bridge. Does that tickle your fancy, Brian? Man, the sound design alone. Because mm. you can throw like any game that's like dark, brownish, kind of brooding stuff. But that sound just absolutely made that presentation. Yeah. When, I, when I was playing, when I was playing it, I had, <laughs> uh, I'm a big weenie. Uh, as I was playing it, you, you walk around and you have your headset on and I kept hearing door, uh, the boards creak in, right. the, in the floor. Like underneath and I, you? And I was like, somebody's moving. What's moving? Oh, go, the guy's what, coming. Was it just you? And then, I, then I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm moving, it's me. And, that's what, and then I, you go in the kitchen and there's cans on the ground and you feel like you're tiptoeing around because you don't want to make noise because you don't want to get, you know, you don't want to alert the whatever's out there. So, oh my goodness, scary. Anyway, okay, crazy. Huh, all right, uh, next thing. Let's talk about um, probably the biggest question mark you know, how, you know how in Metal Gear, when somebody's alerted and there's a big exclamation yes, point yeah, over their yeah. head? <gasps> it was like after watching the... Uh, good the good approximation of it. <laughs> yeah, there was, a big, there was a big question mark over everybody's head after watching that. And just the idea, Nick and I disagree on this, but for me, one of the biggest surprises, I thought Kojima would come out and be like, here is my next project. It's Metal Greer, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. And like, it, it was, they, they, it's essentially the exact same game. Yeah, like they, they didn't do uh, a, uh, like a ukulele or a, uh, a Bloodstained where, you know, it's the creator of some uh, classic franchise yeah. and they're making, you know, same basic thing, but just like different names and characters and all that stuff. This was. This doesn't look like it's going to be anything like Metal Gear. Um, the reason why Craig it is said, that'd be really amazing. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Your baby around, <laughs> put it over your shoulder, <laughs> running around. It's it's a buddy cop movie. It's, you're, you're just <laughs> this naked guy with a naked baby handcuffed to you. This uh, <laughs> stopper my mom will shoot. It's, uh, <laughs> this, oh man, this that trailer is going to have nothing to do <laughs> with whatever the game is. Yeah, the, I'm, like, the game the gameplay reveal is going to probably throw everybody for a loop. It's going to be a Metal Gear game again. <laughs> well, <laughs> mate, like. I don't, sorry, sorry, but uh, go for it. <laughs> apparently, Kojima's already confirmed uh, there was those five guys floating in the sky. Oh, yeah. That they're they're um, the Ludens, which is a reference back to a book from the '80s. And basically, kind of their their mo is they they mess with people. They they experiment with them, kind of figure out like worthy or not, trying to evolve the species. Right. So, I guess the fact that like all the kind of the, the dead creatures that were out there in the world were like failed experiments for them. Yeah. And like the, it's it's even like the, the oil baby thing is just another result of their work. So yeah. all right, it Ryan really with the knowledge, all right. It's fascinating. Like it, whatever it's, it is. It's, it's yeah, yeah, we, whatever like, it is, it sounds it looks great. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's, remember like music videos in like the late eighties where they were just doing just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what stuck. Yeah. This is like watching like like who else would make this? Who else would it's launch true. their game and be <laughs> fucking Norman Reedus digital baby nightmare for like five minutes? Everyone's like, what the god? I think else? they're sitting on the Del Toro reveal. Benicio <laughs> somewhere in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, be better, than the, better than the trailer was just, I, and I told Craig this, I just want one time in my life to enter a room the way Kojima did. <laughs> just like orchestra playing, you know, uh, silhouetted, and then, you know, every footstep you yeah. take lights up the yeah, ground. You know, Everybody's, yeah. you know, applauding. I, I just want to do that one time in my life. Yeah. I want to see, like, the behind the scenes when they, like, handed Norman Reedus the, like, script for this thing. I was like, all right, we're going to have a C set. You're going to have a, sorry, like, yeah, a C section yeah. scar, and you're going to cry with this digital baby, and it's going to be dead fish everywhere. Like, he was and like, you're all naked right. the whole time. Did you <laughs> see the movie Junior? That's you. <laughs> right. no, Norman, here's the thing. <laughs> we need you to take off all your clothes. All right. <laughs> so, all, right. Uh, all right, let's talk about a game. Okay, Doom came out recently. Yeah. People are going crazy over Doom, yep. if you're into that sort of thing. Quake Champion yeah. was announced. And Brian went crazy over this. Danny, I saw you going <clears throat> crazy yeah. about this. Yeah. This was a surprise. You guys didn't expect this. Yes, in a post-Doom world. Like, okay, <laughs> right. Doom was great, right? Yeah. So before you played Doom, did you want it to touch Quake? Man, the way they were just plodding along getting Doom even outside the stores in the first place, yeah. I didn't know what to expect from it anymore. But like in a post-Doom world, you're like, oh no, they got it. They got yeah. the spark back. Like, it's, it's now time to, to... And 
for like a good three minutes of this trailer, I was super worried it was a MOBA. Because obviously it's got like <laughs> champions in the name. Yeah, and it yeah, does yeah. look like they're doing so like there's Hell guns in it and rocket launchers and lightning guns and a bunch of the like the weird C tier characters from Quake 3 are in it, like yeah, Bison. right? But uh it it looks like it might be ability based and also it kinda looks like there might be teams, which they tried once with Team mm. Arena and that wasn't too good. But I'm like cautiously optimistic about it. Super crazy for them to start the conference with it though. Like they just went, oh right, there you go. Quake. You know, you know what was uh you know, the first thing I thought when I saw Quake Champions, I thought, how long until, until Fatality, the old the old gamer, <laughs> comes out of retirement? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, I'm guys. I'm ready. Uh, which I think he's here, by the way. Which right, is really? Fun. Yeah. Uh, he's got something he's pushing these days. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's go to another another uh, kind of old school title uh, that's coming back, Prey. Yeah. Prey, Prey, Prey was announced. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, they, gosh, I remember like some years ago, they had a, a trailer for Prey 2. Mm and then nobody ever heard from it again. And then there's this. It looks totally different, but it still looks really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I, never, I never played the other Prey games, but I know that everybody who did is like <laughs> really keeping this one on their radar. Game. Yeah. That's yeah. the weirdest yeah. thing yeah. about True. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, no, game, you're not, singular. Like, no, no fault of yours, because this is like an <laughs> it's obscure been so long. PC and Xbox, I yeah. think, first person game, which like not that many people yeah. played at the time. Like you, the main character was Tommy Hawk, a Native American who gets sucked up by a UFO while he's listening to Blue Oyster Cult. Yep. And then you basically <laughs> just like go in a space station, like it's, it's, remember, yeah. did, you, did you play it? Yeah, I played a bit. Remember your grand, your dead granddad is like your spirit animal? Yeah. It's the fucking weirdest game ever. It's like, <laughs> it's like why are they calling this game Prey? But ah. on the surface, <laughs> Danny, everything you said, if you went into Hollywood with that script, somebody would buy that script. <laughs> right. Somebody would buy that premise, for sure. It, I mean, you're right. Like, what is it? Human Head or whoever it was had that Prey 2 demo with like yeah, yeah. Alien Bounty Hunter. That looked cool. Mm -hmm. That w went down, you know, the drain. Yeah. The history of Prey has been kind of strange. Yeah. So it's, it's cool to see it hopefully finally coming back with something real. For sure. I just want to go talk to the man at Bethesda. Whoever Bethesda made their mission statement to like revive or just like salvage all these yeah, yeah. Yeah. franchises, I just want to go shake their hand. Because Wolfenstein, then Doom, Doom, now Quake, now Prey. Like Dishonored is basically Thief. Yeah. Like, Prey is <laughs> like, it kind of looks like maybe System Shock. Like, yeah. It's weird, like Bethesda just like cornered. They figured it out, person. man. Yeah. They figured it out. That's awesome. So all right. Uh, Sony, okay, first off, you, I've seen a lot of people on the online who either love the Sony press conferences or were like, meh, it was all right. I personally loved it. Yeah, you I either loved it or you weren't there. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. Or you didn't watch it. Yeah, exactly. You, you didn't there, watch man. it. Now, yeah. last year, Sony had a phenomenal press conference. This year, they followed it up really strong again. I'd say one of the biggest surprises for me was how Sony didn't say a whole lot and just yeah. let their games do their talking. Yeah. Which, it was like, I was talking, when I was talking to Nick, I said, it's almost like going to a uh, going to a movie and just watching a bunch of previews, mm. and that's kind of what it felt like. Yeah, but previews were uh, I don't know, I, I kind of got a slight roller coaster vibe to it, just because the crowd would like all go nuts together. You know, it, it felt like uh, like everybody was just celebrating these these games that they're revealing. Like everybody's like with the Kratos reveals when that all really started for me, because right. the whole crowd just went nuts. And like I didn't like I said I don't really play God of War. I was never really a big fan of those games before, but I, even I was feeling it in that moment. Yeah, it was uh, it was something else for sure. But yeah, the, just the nonstop slew of trailers. I think yeah. they had presenters come out like a four times total. Yeah. Total that in, that, in right. the whole like ninety minutes, two hours, however long the conference was. Yeah. Well, and no celebrities. Yeah, no celebrities. Like, Kojima, but yeah. but his celebrity status comes from being a developer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of us. Yeah. So, they let the game speak for themselves. Yeah, and yeah. you know, you talk about like okay, so Microsoft this year, they have presenters. I mean, and the idea of what Microsoft does every year, it seems like they want to put the focus on the people who are developing the games. Mm. So you put a name or a face with the game itself, yeah. right? And that's great, right? But at the at the end of the day. Every year we leave this and we go, man, Sony had a great press conference. And then you go, Microsoft, uh, you know, it was all right. You know, I guess, you know, depending on where, where you stand, right? right? There's a lot of like, I hadn't considered that, but you're right. There's a lot of downtime between the demos on the Microsoft stage because they're like, okay, and here is X with game. Here is, mm -hmm. you know, with game. And like, there is an element of like, they got to like verbally hype it up. Yeah. It's, they, 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 it's like every every press conference feels the need to do that. Sony didn't, and I think it was just as effective, if not more. Which I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much: one of the most entertaining things about just E3 as a whole is watching 
the nervous indie dev hit the stage and try to sell their game, right. that's the, one of the best things. I, I love everything about yeah. that. And Microsoft, they do that better than anybody. Right. Like, it's, it's, it's outstanding, I love it. All right, Did anyone uh, hit the Yarny level of last year? No, no, Yarny's right. Yarny an all timer. Level. Yeah, yeah. And the, the game also is phenomenal. All right, um, okay. Let's, let's talk about this though, and I, I've talked about this on Twitter quite a bit, mm. and I, I don't understand why Microsoft continuously allows every year Sony to be the bookend mm. of the two, right? Yeah. Microsoft <laughs> goes, six hours later, Sony goes, and they have a chance to essentially make everybody forget about what Microsoft said. I think that they should go head to head WCW versus WWE. <laughs> Monday Night Wars. Monday Night, uh, Monday Night yeah. War, exactly. Oh, they go head to head and say, figure it out. You know, you I, watch I it. I cannot tell you how much I would love hate that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I'd want to be at both. both. I want to be keeping track of both, but of I, can't, I won't be able to. You got to make people decide, man. You got to make people pick. Yeah. Choose well, your or, or I, I didn't have any power in any say in what preference conference I went to. Like this is the first time I got an invite for Sony this year, and that's the only one I got an invite to. So it, it feels kind of like flip of the coin, luck of the draw. But man, it, it, that'd be an interesting uh, like alternate universe where Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft all just do their things at, well, at the same time. It would be amazing. I, I would really appreciate that. I just want Sony to open their presentation with like Kaz Hirai and Mark Kearney riding a tank up to the Galen Center. Kearney or Cerny? Because we had this conversation at Funhouse. I think it's Cerny. Is it Cerny? Cerny. Cerny. Okay. All right. Cerny. All right, last one. We got about a minute left. All right. Uh, and this is probably the biggest surprise for me, which I don't know why it happened. Why nobody told that lady at the Bethesda press conference <laughs> to just shut up? It was probably his mom. Yeah, or his wife or odds, something. That was his mom. I mean, she was, she was going so crazy. happy. She, she was the she biggest the Elder Scrolls Online years. fan there is. Like <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online, Bethesda, they should be they should be like reaching out to her for uh, for uh, so enthusiasm. How do you feel about yeah. Clint? <laughs> we were we were. It was an Elder Scrolls hype lady was the hashtag that was getting thrown around, and then oh, afterwards, <laughs> yeah, and then afterwards a bunch of people started like sending like it was. I started like going on about it, and then people like started sending me info from inside of Bethesda about it. <laughs> So apparently there was a group of about 20 ESO like super fans that they invited uh, who were sitting around there. Okay. Right, right next to the microphone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think literally uh, just one of them lost the run of themselves and would not stop. <laughs> oh, man. Right. oh man. It was really endearing because the guy who went up was kind of felt a little bit like, all right, I know some of you don't care about ESO. But, uh, and then he had this like this pack in the crowd that were just like lapping it up. Oh uh, so, yeah, they, they were flat. straight. Literally it was a dog bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it was going crazy. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Dude, thank you guys so much for coming on stage. This is great, as always, Nick, Brian. As yeah. You can find them all on uh, Screw Attack and Danny, of course, on, you know, here. I contractually <laughs> have to be here to That's make right. sure you guys don't. You gotta, you gotta, you're the guy with the, with the leash, making, making sure we don't say too many bad words. Uh, so coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about the excitement of Microsoft. We talked about Sony a few minutes ago. We're going to rank our excitement for Microsoft. That's just a few minutes away. So stick around. The, uh, it's the GameSpot co-op stage here at E3 2016.